So welcome to this short lecture on the cells of the spinal cord. In this lecture, we'll cover the main cells that are located in the spinal cord and why they are important for its function. So moving on from Mike's lecture, which looked at the overview of the central nervous system, specifically the spinal cord, we saw that all sensory information, so this is touch, temperature, pain, comes from the body and comes into the spinal cord as electrical information and then is sent up to the brain to be made sense of. And then the brain can also send electrical information downwards as motor signals to go out to the body to help with movement. Now in this lecture, we're gonna look at how do these cells partake in the function of the spinal cord. So let's start by looking at a cross section in a spinal cord. So if we made a cut through, through the spinal cord and then look down on it, what we would see is an image like this. And from this, you can see straight away that there's two different colors. There's what we call the gray matter and then what we have the white matter. So in the gray matter, what we find in that area, this is the communication part of the spinal cord. In there, we find the ends of the neuron. So this is the dendrites of the neuron and the end terminals, as well as the cell bodies. We also find the glia, which are cells that helped to put the neurons together. And these are called glial cells because they're glue cells. We also see lots of blood vessels there, which are also important for the function of the neurons. Whereas outside in the white matter, this is where the tracks are. This is where the highways are. So this is where the axons are going up and down, up to the brain and back down. So it's white because this is insulated to make the speed go quicker. So let's now jump, jump to the most important cell in the nervous system or the spinal cord, and this is the neuron. So the neuron, is sometimes known as the nerve cell. So its function is specifically to send electrical information. So there's about 100 billion neurons in the central nervous system. So they play a very important role from sending signals up and down or to each other to make sense of the outside world. So when we look at the anatomy of a neuron, what we can see here is the body, the cell body, and sticking out from the cell body are what we call dendrites or branches. These are areas that receive information from other neurons or other receptors. Now going through the cell body, we have this long slender projection, which we call the axon. And this is where the action potential or the electrical information is sent right to the end, which is what we call the end terminal, which then can communicate with another neuron at the dendrite or to another effector organ. So when we think about a motor signal, what has to happen if we, if we wanna move, let's say the right finger, we have to send an information from the brain down the cord and then come out to, to move the muscle. So what would happen is up here in the motor cortex of the left side of the brain, we have this part of the neuron, which will activate and send an information down the axon. Now the axon would come all the way down to the, through into the spinal cord until the point of where it needs to come out of. Now, as it's coming down the spinal cord, it will be probably traveling in an area of white matter there. And then when it's getting close to where it has to come out to go to the right finger, it then comes out of that white matter tract into the gray matter, where it then synapses on a special neuron, which would then go to the muscle of that finger, come out of the spinal cord, and then go to the finger. Now that's fairly straightforward, but we have to send this information really quick. So what we need to do is speed it up. The best way to speed it up is to insulate it, to put myelin around it. And this is what makes it white. And the cell that does this is the first glial cell we'll cover called the oligodendrocyte. Oligodendrocyte. And what this means is oligo few dendro, dendro branches site cell. So we can see the few branches here. That's why it's called oligodendro and it's a site meaning it's cell here. So these branches actually lock on to the axon of the neuron. So that, these would actually wrap themselves around the axon like so. And what that will do is it insulates it, thus makes it white, therefore increases the speed and just so you can see how it increases the speed, in a motor signal, you can have motor neurons that go, that's, that travel at about 120 meters a second, opposed to, let's say, a painful stimulus that comes in and goes up, 
without much myelin and that only goes at half a meter a second. So you can see how important the myelin is for the speed of the conduction. All right, moving on to the next cell. This one is called, and all these cells are called glial cells. Now this cell here is an astrocyte. So astro means star, site means cell. So astrocyte is the star cell. So what this particular does, this particular glial cell does, is it really helps to support the neurons in the, in the central nervous system in the spinal cord. So it really maintains the chemical environment for the neuron to make sure that there isn't too many chemicals building up or, not, or too many neurotransmitters, or it can regulate what's coming from the blood into the neurons. And we call this the blood-brain barrier. So imagine if you had a blood vessel like this, like so, a, a pipe taking blood, the astrocyte's feet would clamp onto the blood and that would regulate how things go from the blood in into the neurons, which would happen in the gray matter, okay? And therefore it can dictate the amount of blood flow that actually is coming to that area. So it plays a very important role for maintaining the working environment for the neuron. Finally, we're left with this little cell here, even though it's not to scale. This is called a microglia, okay? Which means it's very small. Now, this particular cell has a very strong immune function. So it almost acts like what we call a macrophage or like a Pac-Man. And it goes through your spinal cord looking for injuries, looking for infections, looking for any problems that it can encounter and start to eat up any damaged tissue. It would also notif notify the other part of the immune system to bring in help, bring in recruits to help clean things up. So if there's injuries, if there's infections, if there's inflammation, the microglia play a very important role there. Finally, and I haven't listed here, but just for completion, there's, a, there's a, one more type of glial cell, cell we call the ependymal cell, which actually lines the canal in the central, it's right in the middle called the central canal. That's where we have CSF and it helps the flow of CSF move through that. That's called ependymal cell, also a glial cell. So there we have it. That's the main cells that we need to know of the spinal cord. We have the neuron, highly important for the electrical information. And then there's these three glial cells that are very important to help the role of the spinal cord.